Kyle Muller, the opening day starter for your Oakland Athletics. Now, let, let, let's think about that for a second. Last time he was on this program was down in Arizona, and we were talking about, yeah, this is your time. Time to be in the rotation. I'm tired of being in the minor leagues. I'm too good for that. Wait a minute. Opening day starter? What the heck happened from the time we talked to where we are now? A lot. A lot. I, uh, I'd i be lying if I said, uh, you know, I expected that. I didn't. It was um, – you know, I was just excited to make the team. And then they called me into the office and told me, and I, it's like, I had almost talked myself out of that being a possibility. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, yeah. so at first, like mentally, like I knew how big of a deal it was. So I freaked out, but like the feelings, it got, it caught up to me on Friday when they had, it, cause it, they told me on a Wednesday, they, and then they announced it Friday. So when, you know, it kind of got out there and I had people texting me, that's when the feelings of it, yeah. you know, started to build. But then, uh, man, I'm, I'm, it was the most fun I've ever had on a baseball field, for sure. Like, you think of all the guys who will pitch in Major League Baseball history, there's a select few that got to be the opening day starter. Right. right. Like, you're now one of those guys. Yeah, no, it's crazy. I'm still I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. This. Uh, so they told me on Wednesday, and then I uh, pitched on a Thursday, so I was thinking about it for an entire week. And, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I am glad that that is – over with i mean i enjoyed every second of it but you know thinking about that for a whole week was uh, kind of exhausting okay they tell you yeah i know you're fired up you had some interesting uh words that we can't even say yeah, on yeah, yeah sorry about that, that yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> who was your first phone call to oh, my mom yeah my i called my mom uh because uh you know, we we still hadn't gotten word that i was on the team you know so we were hoping and you know just you know, staying low key about it. And then, uh, once I found out, I called her, told her I made the team. And then I told her that on top of it, she could, she couldn't handle it. She loved it. She was so happy. And then, uh, uh, called my dad, fiance, and then all my, all my close family friends. So it was, it was, it was the best. Cause I, you know, when we talked to you down in Arizona, right. you'd mentioned to us that your times when you got called up in Atlanta, it was basically, in AAA, whose ever turn it was, it wasn't like a special deal. Right. It was like whose ever turn it was, you had a bunch of good players down there. Right. And they just called you up. Mm -hmm. This was now different. Yeah. Do you feel different? Um, yes and no. Uh, yes, being that I feel like, um, you know, I, I, I've got my chance to, to pitch up here on a regular basis and, and really take that next step in my, you know, career. Um, so I feel different in that regard, but from like a personality, you know, person standpoint, not really, um, you know, I'm still going to work just as hard as I was working before. Um, you know, even if they told me I was starting day five, like it, that, none of that matters to me. It's just whoever's pitching that day, like they're giving you the confidence and, and pretty much saying, Hey, we, we are putting you out there cause we want to win, you know, and that's all five of us. So, um, you know, it, it didn't really matter where I was slotted the pitch. As long as I was slotted the pitch, I was yeah. going to be the happiest person, you know, on the team. I mean, game plan, you know, the one thing I'm talking about with, with, with a lot of the young starters is it's about pumping strikes, quality strikes, right? right? Not getting into bad counts, not getting your pitch counts up because we know how they want to take everybody out so early. Right. Just how important is it? We know you have terrific stuff. But how important is it to pound the strikes on? Oh, it's huge. And it, it, it keeps you in the game a lot longer. And, um, you know, the other day I, I didn't have my best stuff in terms of, of command. But whenever I needed to make a pitch, um, I felt like I, I did a good job of that. And that, that comes with, you know, game plan with Shea. Like I was on the same page with him. We'd come in, we'd talk um, in the dugout. And, uh, you know, we lived together. So we were talking about it the night before. Like, yeah. So we had, a, we had a solid plan going into it. But, uh, you know, when it, when it came down to it, when we needed to make a pitch, we did. So, uh, but, yeah, getting in the strike zone, it opens up a lot more opportunities because it just makes every other pitch that much better. Ta I talk so much about the process. Everybody, we, everybody wants to talk about just about data right. and numbers. Everything is from the neck up. Everybody's got talent, but what are you from the neck up? And part of, uh, of being a pro is your routine, your confidence, and how comfortable you are. You mentioned living – with Shea Langoliers, yep. but obviously you guys have known each other back from your Atlanta days. How right. much does that help you being so comfortable and trusting him? Yeah, no. So what the best part about it is we have such an open dialogue. Like he can tell me things that, you know, he might not feel comfortable telling other people and I can do the same, you know, to him. Um, 
just because we have that friendship first. And then it's like, if we're in the dugout, I'm like, Hey, you know, I want to do this to this guy. You know, he has no problem being like, okay, I, you know, that's great. But I think this would be better. Like we can kind of talk back and forth. Um, And he probably sees certain things in your mechanics. If they get a little off, he's caught you so much. He can be like, Hey man, you may get a little up a little bit. You're getting around it. I mean, stuff like that. Right. Absolutely. And that, and that comes with just, you know, talking with him, you know, hanging out and uh, hanging out in the clubhouse and, uh, he's a very personable guy. I'm sure everybody yeah. knows that. So uh, he, he's easy to talk to. And, and, you know, he he does a very good job of listening to kind of like the things we want to do as a, as a pitcher. And um, and he kind of changes his game to accommodate us, which is, is uh, you know, an incredible quality to have in a catcher. So when you're up there first yeah. inning, opening day, yeah. your heart's racing, racing man. Racing. It's going nuts. And then it's Oh, S bomb. There's Trout. There's Otani. Yeah. Here it is. Well, that's the thing, though. It's like, you know, I've, as long as I've played baseball, that's, those are the guys I want to face. You know, yeah. you, you, you don't, you know, grow up wanting to play in the major leagues and face the worst player in the major leagues. You want to face the best. You're always thinking about how would I do against the best? And of course, you know, night one, we get Trout number one and number two <laughs> in the world. So, no, it was, it was the, you know, such a, a surreal feeling. After pitch one, though, I, I, I felt, you know, get the jitters out of the way the crowd was getting going too that for that first pitch got that out of the way i settled in and then um you know that i've never yelled after the first inning of a baseball game but uh, like just everything was going the emotions were high so it was a it was a blast yeah when you get in here it's an old stadium it's it was built for baseball and football you now kind of understand right. what a sold out Raider game was like, right? Yeah. You get, and, and the acoustics here, mm-hmm. you All start to see like, it's crazy yeah. how loud it gets. Yeah. And I, well, I think we, we had a really good crowd too. We had like, was Almost 27,000. Right. Now. And so, and all, yeah, all the concrete, all the sound kind of stays in and echoes and it was just building and building and building. And uh, it was, it was so cool. I remember we were uh, on the line for the national anthem. I was just talking to Shay cause we have like 50 days of service, you know, like him and me, like, so, uh, we're kind of in the same spot in our careers. And I'm like, dude, we're starting on, you know, opening day like this, <laughs> it's awesome. kind of like taking it in a little yeah. bit, but you know, knowing that we're out there to compete and, and get the win, which we did at the end of the day. And that's what we talked about in spring training. This is the land of opportunity right. and you're getting that. So, okay. Boom. Made it happen. First one. Now, what is it like the process? Just take us through. I know you only have so much time, but right. you know, there's a lot of data. There's a lot of video. There's a lot of things you can. So what's it like now for you before your next start? Yeah, no, it's um, kind of trial and error, to be honest with you. Um, I have all the things that, you know, I know have worked and I can still do throughout the minor leagues in terms of like physical preparation and bullpens and stuff like that. Um, you know, the scouting reports and stuff that's newer to me. Um, and because you're right, there is so much data. So being able to like, sift through everything and figure out what pieces are useful um is big because you can definitely get like uh paralysis by analysis kind of thing um so for me it's it's just understanding you know key part or you know key pieces of information that i can use in certain spots during the game like if i have guys on base like you know what can i go to like you know what i mean like um just having that knowledge in my back pocket and then going out there it gives you you know physically unprepared mentally unprepared and you know do the best I can. You know, the number one thing that I took away from our interview is you have belief in yourself. Mm-hmm. And it's so interesting when you talk to professional athletes, because in the end, the only person that matters believing you is you. Right. Doesn't matter. Me, my producer, Cody, hell, Kotze, Emerson, your parents, your fiance. It's right. you got to believe you right. got. I mean, and it was so much fun talking to you because. It's your time. You know it's your time, and you believe. And that's why I'm so happy for you because you, you said, you know what, I'm I'm earning this. I'm taking it, and I'm going to make it happen. Right. And you did. I'm Appreciate so happy that. for you. Congratulations. You and we want to have you on a lot more. Absolutely. And continued success. And let's do this. Let's do this thing. The big lefty right here Perfect. on A's Cast Live.